Alongside Rusty Enzer, I'm Michael Watcher, and glad you're spending some time with us. Five total runs in this series so far, all by Tennessee, as the Vols pitching staff has shut out their opponents over the last 25 innings. Georgia hasn't had a runner at third base this entire series. Cousins with a service. Sends it in, middle of the area. Shaw with the header! She puts it in! The storybook ending for the Jamaican International. Wins it for Tennessee! She's got the thunder in that bat. Fly ball, deep left field, back to the fence, and it's off of the scoreboard and left. Klingler has given A&M the lead here in the sixth. Mangum stepping out of the batter's box here, building anticipation. One ball, two strikes the count. Tied with Jeffrey Ray for the program lead. The one-two. Line drive, right side. That's a base hit, and that's the record for Jake Mangum. He sits atop of the Bulldogs' all-time career hits list. That's number 336. Outside set, Grubbs again. She crushes it across the floor for her 18th kill. Her diving effort from Feltz. Grubbs with a chance off the block. It goes out of bounds, and Tennessee takes it. Couldn't quite find the range. Davis, a baseball pass out for Westbrook, running the floor and getting the layup. Jackson, nice touch pass underneath. Davis with a layup. Alongside Rusty Enzer, I'm Michael Watcher. I'm glad you're spending some time with us tonight. Georgia last night entered as one of the best teams with runners in scoring position, but never could quite get that big hit. Georgia had not lost back-to-back -back games all year until coming here to Knoxville had been so good responding after losses. Just couldn't quite get the run support yesterday, but here in the final game of the series, their offense is off and rolling. King pops this to shallow right field. It will be fielded by the second baseman, Rucker, and coming home, Maxwell, the throw not in time. Alert base running from Maxwell after the double, a steal, and then scoring on a shallow pop. And Georgia leads 5-0. Michael, I think Jake Rucker thought it was the third out of the inning. Watch his reaction there. See, he kind of turns away from the play. I think he thinks there's that's the third out. And alertly, Tucker Maxwell tie, uh, tags up. He was probably just going to fake. And then when he saw Rucker kind of nonchalant after the he made the, the put out, he hustled home. That's a big fifth run for Georgia. Aaron Shunk standing in. The other question that you have to look at as well. Why is Ammons not charging forward to make that play? Because his momentum would carry him forward and he'd be able to make a stronger throw rather than Rucker backpedaling. Well, that's a great point. And as, as Rucker's the second baseman, any ball in the air, he's going to go for it until he hears the outfielder call him off. And really the ball, I think, under normal situations, circumstances, you know, Maxwell's not going to try to score from third, but you're right. Rucker's momentum is taking him away from the play. Ammons would be coming towards the play. Martinez snares a laser from Shunk. That ends the inning, but Georgia scores two more, starting off by Cheney Rogers. First career home run, 5 nothing Georgia. Alongside the All-American and former SEC Player of the Year, Madison Shipman, I'm Michael Watcher, and glad you're spending some time here on this Friday and for Tennessee Chelsea Sagarin off to a really nice start to the season and now it brings Haley Beard into the plate she has homered today but I'm sure she would have potentially traded it for this game against Florida State and the catch against Danny Morgan that would have tied the ball game at the time on Sunday. That was just absolutely a phenomenal catch. I was standing right down the left field line and I was hoping it was gonna go over as I was there as a fan last weekend. But man, that was just a great catch. But Haley Bearden coming up against a top ranked Florida State, being aggressive and able to drive that ball out. It was a huge, momentum change for, for both teams. I mean, Tennessee was excited that they finally got hard bat on the ball, and on the flip side, it propelled Florida State to end up holding their lead and ultimately getting the win in that game. Bearden will be brought back, and it will be Pacini. So uh, a big buildup to bring Pacini to the plate here with two outs in the fourth. And I thought it was interesting what Coach Weekly said is this: her team has not made an error all season, one of two teams that haven't. And she mentioned that sometimes you need plays like that, great plays,
to really say that you have a good defense, it's not just the 1,000 in the fielding percentage area. Fly ball down the right field line will get out of play, and it's one and one. And I talked about the momentum a little bit, but just a, a play like that and seeing your outfielder give that kind of effort as a pitcher, I mean, you just got to feel on top of the world when your outfielder is willing to go over the fence and bring that ball back and rob a game-tying home run. It's just huge, and that's what Karen Weekly said, that she wants to work with their outfielders to try to make those kinds of plays going forward in the season. Florida State won the national championship last year, and Karen Weekly said that a lot of good things came out of that game in particular. She learned that her team was not going to quit no matter what happened on the year. But she also said looking across the field, she saw what it would take to compete at a national championship caliber level, and that it was good for the kids to see where they're lacking and what they need to improve upon. 